Julie Tamor is with me now. Hi, Julie. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. As we just saw, your production of The Magic Flute is so visually inventive. What was your original inspiration? The flute. The flute itself. It's, uh, it's absolutely... Pay no uh, attention to the yeah, much going on in the background. <laughs> it's, it's a delicious uh, kaleidoscope, literally. It's a kaleidoscope of imagery. It's, it's magical. So it actually demands that you be magical as well as a director and as a designer. So the material itself. Well, how did you go about adapting flute into the streamlined 100-minute version that the Met is presenting? Well, I had the good fortune of doing it. Actually, I did it in Florence in Firenze first. Okay. And then when I was brought to the Met, I did a new production here, a full-out three- or four-hour German uh, Die Sauber float. Uh -huh. and, and then we had the opportunity with the um, librettist, Sandy McClatchy, to, to actually adapt it clean up a few things that felt dated in the libretto, mm -hmm. but really hone it, bring it down to a, a, a um, scale that is right for, for a younger audience. At least that's the thought behind it. Well, as you say, the, music, the magic flute is mm -hmm. great as an opera for children, but there are some very sophisticated themes as well as some mystical ideas. What do you think makes it work so well on so many different levels? I think it's like Shakespeare. I think what happens is, and I, I, I love this expression, it's like an elevator that goes up 40 stories, and you can get off on any level. And that's why with Shakespeare, with, with the flute, with, with what Schikaneder and Mozart have created, you can enjoy it for its beautiful music, its beautiful imagery, the, the basic magical fairy tale outline, or you can sit there and ponder the deeper thoughts behind it. And that's, I think, I think it's very inspired by The Tempest and, and other Shakespeare works. I think that that's behind it. Well, as with so many of your productions, this magic flute features incredible puppetry. But the puppets are not like what we have seen in The Lion King or some of your other shows that mm -hmm. you've directed. What makes the puppetry in flute so different? Well, I took the principle of air because it is the flute. The flute, yeah. So the idea of air meant that the, the notion of kites would be the main style. So even the, uh, the dragon, or the beast that comes in the beginning, I didn't actually add more animals than, than they already had in the text. <laughs> I just put them out there. But if you look at the style, they're all done basically in the style of Japanese kites. So they're made of silk, and they're very light. And you have the birds of Papageno, and they're, they're, they're also made out of very, very thin fabrics, and sometimes literal kites or shadow puppets. And, and that, was, that was the idea to have, that was the organizing unity principle of the style of the piece. Well, Julie, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. You're it's been welcome. a pleasure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Me too.